these gods, they are fearless. <laughs> I don't see a God panicking about mere mortals. <laughs> they operate with an unusual kind of boldness and courage. Hallelujah. Is their heritage. They are as bold as a lion. That's who they are. They are not timid. They are gentle. <laughs> you can see both the nature of the, of the lion and the lamb in them. Where they need to show the meekness of a lamb, you see it. The gentleness of a lamb, you see it. But where they need to be as bold as a lion, they stand up to that. The scripture tells us their nature. By virtue of the righteousness that they shared with God, they are as bold as the lion. Proverbs 28, verse 1. And I want you, because if you want me to be fast, you should be reading for me. The righteous, they are as bold as the lion. It's part of our DNA. We can suppress it. We can limit the expression of it, but it's in us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because that's who we are. Can we read it? Proverbs 28, verse 1. The wicked fly through no one pursues, but the yes. righteous are as bold as a lion. Yeah, the wicked, they run. They fly, they, they flee when nobody's even pursuing them. They are afraid where there is nothing. They scream when a cockroach is running around in the house. Spider. Or a spider. <laughs> but the righteous, they are as bold as a liar. Brothers, it's in our DNA. And that's what I just want to let you know. It is in us. It's part of the spirit that we have received. Oh, may the Lord help us to understand this in Jesus' name. Amen. Come with me for a moment. Boldness is part of our nature. And God wants to see it expressed. It's part of our godness. It's part of the seed that God has put inside of us. And when God wants a man to rise up to be the God that he has created him to, to be, God will always tell him something, which I will show you later. In Romans chapter 8, Am I there quickly? Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Sir, so you need to turn to the mic. Yes. In Romans chapter 8. Are you hearing me now? Yes. Okay. In Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Uh, I will pick the verse for you. Uh, if you can just read for me. Uh, where? Okay. Can someone read briefly? From verse uh, 15, please. Read from me from verse 15. Spirit you received does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, so the spirit you have received, the spirit that you have received, does not make you a slave to fear, a slave to fear. Fear enslaves a man. It hinders expression. 
It limits capacity. It dwarfs even a giant. <laughs> and that's why I understand from the theologians who have counted it, that there are 366 fear not in the Bible. One for, One for each day of the year. Mm. Are you following me? Mm. Go on, my sister, the reader. <laughs> <laughs> Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him, we cry, Abba, Father. Man. So by that, we cry, Abba, Father. It's with confidence. We come before the Lord with confidence. The spirit we have received does not bring us into slavery under fear. And that is why God spoke to his people. In Isaiah 51, verse 12, somebody to read it for me. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 51, verse 12. God was challenging his people. He said something to them, which I want us to take today. I will pick just one or two more. I have many scriptures to that effect, but don't worry today. It's just to give you the nuggets and you can build on them. Isaiah 51, verse 12. If I'm not mistaken. I, even I, am he who comforts you. Yes. yes. Who are you that you should be afraid of a man who will die? Who and are you to be afraid? I'm the one who encourages you. I'm the one who sends the encouragement to you. So who are you then to be afraid of a man who will die? Are you following me? The, that's why the gods... <laughs> They don't fear mere mortals. Who are you to be afraid of a man who will die? Hmm. Go on, my brother. Still a word more there. Yes. And, uh, and of the son of man who will be made like grass. And of, and, and of son of man who will one day be turned like grass. They spring up in the morning by night. You call them, they are gone. It doesn't matter what position, what the position of a man is. It doesn't matter what title a man holds. As gods, we could never be afraid of them. And that's why there's, there should be no hero worship. Amongst us as gods. Are you following me? Mm. Especially those who work in different places of work where you really, really, literally have to, to be, to make yourself like a slave to some people. No. You don't do that. You do what you're supposed to do, but don't let us be afraid of people, mere mortals. In the community, we should be able to stand for the truth without being intimidated. Mere mortals who exist today and tomorrow, they are not. Who are you? He said, who are you to be afraid? <laughs> Do you remember what he told Joshua? In Joshua 1, because God wanted him to live as a God. Because he could not fulfill his mission if he doesn't live with courage and with boldness. In one chapter, God told Joshua three times, be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Only be strong and very courageous. Joshua 1 verses 5. Just read verse 5 and 6. And you will see what God is saying there. Brothers, this morning... I'm, I'm praying that the Lord will steer up courage inside of us in Jesus' name. Amen. The gods are courageous. Amen. The gods are courageous people. Amen. For us to live to the expectation of God for our lives, to operate as gods in this world, 
we must be courageous. Amen. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. No man, no man. And that, and that word alone, you know that it has already lifted him over an ordinary mere man. Mm -hmm. If he says no man, that it means it's lifted you higher than them, isn't it? No yes, man sir. is no man. Or what does it mean to be no? What does no man mean? No man. No man. No man. So no man, may be no man shall, be, no man may shall be, be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I yes. was with Moses, so I will be with you. Yes. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. Be strong and of good courage. Be for strong to this people. and of good courage. Let's leave it there. We can read the remaining. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Why was God making reference to Moses? Because in Exodus 7, 1, which we are not going to read today, he told myself, I've made you as God to Pharaoh and to all the land of Egypt. So from Joshua to live up to that, God needed to encourage him. He said, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life, whether they be kings, whether whoever they may be. And but the only thing you need to do, be strong and very courageous because it is in you. May the Lord give us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. First Timothy 1, is it 17 now? First Timothy 1, 17. Paul was talking to Timothy. He said, no, stir up the grace of God that is in you. For the Lord has not given us spirit of timidity but of boldness, boldness of law and of a sound man. It is a grace that is ours in Christ Jesus. It is a gift from God because it's part of our nature. There's no point fearing mere mothers. In school, in the place of work, in the society at large, for us to live the way God wants us to live, we must be a courageous, bold, confident people. Psalm 118, I think that's the last one I'm going to read. Or should I read Psalm 27? They are, they are both very wonderful Psalms. Psalm 27, 1 to 3, somebody to read that. And then another person, 118 verse 6. Psalm 27, not 127, Psalm 27. The Lord will punish with his crow. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Yes. Who should I fear? Who should I fear? Who should I fear? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who should I fear? Go on. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of who yes. should I be afraid? Of who when should I be afraid? That's the way the gods talk. That's the way the gods talk. Are you following me? That's the way they talk. Of who should I be afraid? God is my light. God is my salvation. Is my shield. Is my protector. Of whom should I be afraid? Go on. When the wicked advance against me to deform me, it is my enemies and my foes will stumble and fell. Yeah. Through an army beside me, my heart will not fear. To a war break out against me, even then I'll be confident. Amen. <laughs> Confidence is part of our nature as mm -hmm. gods. Mm -hmm. When God says you are God, he's simply saying you are courageous, you are a bold people who will not allow in yourself to be intimidated by anything. He said, even if it's around me, even if a whole host gathers around me, Amen. in this I will be confident. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's work with confidence because without confidence, we will never be able to express the true nature of God that is in us. Amen. Boldness is one of the ways we exercise. You know, Jesus was going to be intimidated by Herod one time. He was. 
in Luke 13, I think it should be 30, 33, 35, yes, 33 30 to 35, thereabout. Somebody to check it for me. I think it's 33 to 35. When they came to meet him, they said, you know, Herod has asked you to pack your things now. It's going to kill you. Jesus said, go and tell that fox. That all Jesus was displaying there was courage and boldness to say, look, no, I'm not yielding to intimidation. When I'm ready to surrender myself to be, you know, as a sacrifice for the atonement of the sin of men, I will do, but not at your threat will I move. Mm -hmm. You didn't get that point. Yeah. Did somebody catch that point? Mm -hmm. Jesus was showing his superiority, the superiority of his authority over the threat <laughs> of one error. Mm -hmm. Am I correct in the scripture I quoted? Luke 13. 32. 32, 32. to read it. Verse 32. And he said to them, go tell that fox. Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow. Okay. Read from verse 31. Read from verse 31. I on, think that on that very day, some Pharisees came saying to him, get out and depart from here for Herod wants to kill you. 32, and he said to them, go tell that fox, behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow, and the yes. third day I shall be perfected. I shall be perfected. So, so go and tell that fox. Today, I'm doing the work that I need to do. On the third day, I'll be perfected. Then he went ahead to say, for it is not possible. That's, yes, read the next verse. Nevertheless, I must journey today and tomorrow and the day yes. following, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish outside of Jerusalem. I must journey today and tomorrow. I must continue the work today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It cannot be that a prophet should perish outside of Jerusalem. Simply saying, my life is in the hand of God. He knows the timing of my, of my time. He knows where I'm going to lay down my life not at your threat, will I bow. Peter displayed the same thing because I'm sure they heard him. When they were threatening them, don't preach in this name again, they say, for where? He said, you consider it among yourself, whether it is more appropriate to obey you than to obey God. You judge it among yourself. And when they said this, when they saw his countenance, they knew he had been with Jesus. Mm. Boldness is part and parcel of the grace that God has bestowed on us by the reason of the seed of righteousness that has been planted in us. Let us freely express it. It is sometimes people will say it's arrogance. It's not arrogance. There's a difference between arrogance and true boldness that comes from God. One is for self, the other is for the purpose of the kingdom of God. And the Lord will help us to discern the two, between the two in Jesus' name. Amen. I've never seen people who have advanced the kingdom of God, the frontiers of the kingdom, without courage, without boldness. Amen. May you receive true boldness, Amen. true confidence that comes from God, Amen. even Amen. today in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's move on to the next one. They have the power to pardon <laughs> and to punish sin. Ooh. The power to pardon and to punish sin. If you turn to Mark chapter 2, let me find that verse for you. Mark 2. If somebody can just read for me from verses 6 to, no, 5 to 12 would do. 5 to 12 would do. Can somebody read that for me? There was something that happened there. Let me just tell you the story. Something, something happened. happened. Just write it down. You don't need to read because of time. Something happened in that passage. Uh, a man was brought 
a paralytic man, you know, the friends broke the rule and all the rest of them, they dropped him before the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Jesus was going to, they expected Jesus to just heal this man. But Jesus went ahead in those verses to say that, to first of all, proclaim to the man, your sins are forgiven you. Now, the people raised the eyebrow. They said, no, who is able to forgive sin except God? This man is going beyond his level because they saw a man, a son of man, who is forgiving sin. Are you following me? And the general thing will have been well is Jesus, the son of God himself is God. But really, no, what Jesus said there was amazing. He said, I have done this so that you will know that the son of man has power also to forgive sin. Uh-huh. Are you, did you get that point? No. The son of man has the power to write off sin. Amen. Amen. I remember a, situa- a, a situation, I mean, I'm not, this one just came to my mind, where something had happened and something happened and uh, after God brought me into that picture and I was thinking, what do we do? When, I said, well, God said, no, it is, you should just proclaim total forgiveness and annulment of that sin and there will be nothing more to do about it. Ah, I said, wonderful. And I pronounced it and I declared it. And to the glory of God, that matter died there. Are you following me? That is exercising our right as God. And when Jesus, to now tell you that it wasn't Jesus alone who had the power to do it, but he has relinquished that to us so that we can also operate in his capacity. This is the last statement I'm going to make. Turn with me to John 20, and this is where we close. I have other things to say, but let's leave it here today. In John 20, if you go to John chapter 20, yes, 21 to 23, somebody to just read it. In that sense, God is saying, Jesus was saying, I'm sending you out as God. Again. I'm sending you in my capacity as a God. And I want all of us to go in that, in that confidence. The other aspect of punishing, I can't, I can't go into that today. But the reality is that we have the power to pardon sin and to punish sin. We have the power to do it. <laughs> if you are not forgiving people, if you are not pronouncing forgiveness on people, you are actually in a way Hindering your own manifestation as the God that you are. I know some of us will say, because they also say we can retain sin. But the first thing people want to approach a God for is to say, can my sin be forgiven, please? Is it not? And you now pronounce forgiveness over them. You are pardoned. You are forgiven. No consequences will follow this over your life. You have repented. And I pronounce in the name of God over you, forgiveness. Amen. You don't understand this. You can discharge people from the prison of guilt of sin. And I've seen it done. No, I've seen God use me in that capacity and the people are free. (laughs) Read it and we'll close here. Again, Jesus, again, I'm oh, sorry. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And we that bread on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Go on. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Can you see that? As the Father has sent me, so I sent you. And the first thing he said, 
If you forgive anyone's sin, they are forgiven to them. If you fail to, they are not. That's literally, that's an enormous authority. If you know what that means. But God will want to trust such authority to people who are matured enough to know how to use it. The power to forgive. Let's bow down our heads as we talk to God this morning. Do you know how much God has bestowed in us to be able to live the life of a God? When we talk about operating as God, then you will begin to see how people live it out in their own lives. Go to God this morning. Thank him for the spirit that he has put in, in us. The spirit that does not make us slaves to, to fear. Pray that you will not be a slave to fear because God has called you God. Who are you to be afraid of mere mortals and falling demons? No. Be strong and very courageous is what I'm here hearing God say to all of us today. You have the seed of the righteousness of God in you. Be bold as a lion. Stand for what is right. Pray that you will not walk timid with timidity. You will not panic before me, me. And pray also for this grace, this enormous grace of God's that God has bestowed on us to pardon sin, to, for, to freely release people from the, from the prison of, of guilt to sin. Write it off. Like you are writing off the death of somebody who said, I write this off. If you remember the example that Jesus used of two debtors, it's about writing off debts of people who say you are written off. It's written off for you. May the Lord give us understanding in Jesus' name.